This is part 35 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. Tag helpers are new in ASP.NET Core. So let's understand what tag helpers are and their use with an example. Tag helpers are server-side components. They are processed on the server to create and render HTML elements in Razor files. If you have any experience with previous version of ASP.NET MVC, then you may be familiar with HTML helpers. Tag helpers are similar to HTML helpers. There are many built-in tag helpers for common tasks such as generating links, creating forms, loading assets, etc. To use these built-in tag helpers, we have to import them first. And here is the syntax for importing tag helpers. Add tag helper is the directive that we use to import tag helpers. The first parameter star indicates that we want to import all the tag helpers. And the second parameter Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.MVC.TagHelpers is the name of the assembly which contains the built-in tag helpers. We want the built-in tag helpers to be available for all the views in our entire application. So let's use this view imports file and import the tag helpers. Now let's understand how to generate hyperlinks using tag helpers. Let's do that with an example. Here is what we want to do. At the moment when we click this view button, nothing happens. What we want to do is when we click, we want to redirect the user to the details view where we can see the specific employee details. Similarly, when we click this back button, we want to go back to the employee list. In our index view, here is the view anchor element and notice at the moment the href attribute is set to hash. We want to set that to slash home slash details slash the ID of the employee whose details we want to view. There are several ways to do this. One way is by simply hard coding the path to slash home slash details slash the ID of the employee whose details we want to view. To get the ID of the employee, we can use this employee variable. Notice on the employee variable, we have the ID property. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Let's go to the index view, reload the page and then view the page source. Notice the href attribute value of the anchor element. For the first employee, it is slash home slash detail slash one. For the second employee, it is slash home slash detail slash two, so on and so forth. So this means when we click view button, we see that specific employee details. At the moment, we are not using HTML helpers or tag helpers to generate these hyperlinks. We are manually appending these strings to generate the correct href attribute value. Let's do the same using HTML helper. We are going to use action link HTML helper. There are several overloads for this method. First, we need to specify the link text. The link text is going to be view. And then we specify the name of the action method that we want to execute. The action method is details. And then we can also specify the controller name. The controller is home. And then finally, any route data that we want to pass. Now remember, when we want to view a specific employee details, we have to pass a value for the employee ID. So the name of the parameter there is ID. So we use an anonymous object for that and then specify the name of the route parameter, which in our case is ID, and then the value for that. To get the value again, we can use this employee variable. So let's do the same thing. Save our changes so far. Go back to the index view and reload the page. Notice we have the view link here and if we view the page source, there we go. Action link HTML helper has generated this anchor element with the correct href attribute value. As you can see, action link HTML helper generates the entire anchor element. But if you want just the href attribute value as a string, then use at URL dot action helper. We need to pass the required parameters just like how we did it with action link helper. First, the name of the action method, which is details, and then the name of the controller, home, and then any route parameter values. We use an anonymous object for that, and then specify the name of the route parameter, which is ID, and the value for this is going to come from the employee variable. Notice from the IntelliSense, the action method returns the URL as a string. So the advantage of using this action method is that we can set this returned string as the value for the href attribute of the anchor element and then style the anchor element using the bootstrap styling classes btn and btn primary. So let's do this quickly. 
So the href attribute value equals whatever this method is going to return. Next, let's use the class attribute and specify the bootstrap styling classes, btn and btn primary. Finally, let's set the link text to show, save our changes and take a look at the browser. There we go, we have the show button and when we view the page source, notice show button is right here and the correct href attribute value is generated. Now, let's do the same using tag helpers which are new in ASP.NET Core. To use tag helpers, we use the anchor element and then to specify the name of the controller, we use ASP-Controller tag helper. Notice, as soon as I included this attribute ASP-Controller, the style of this anchor element is changed. It is bolded and it is purple in color. So it's slightly different from this anchor element right here. So this styling indicates that we are using the anchor tag helper. Anchor tag helper enhances the standard anchor element by adding these attributes asp-controller, asp-action, asp-route-values. Now let's specify the name of the controller here. Similarly, we use asp-action attribute to specify the name of the action method. Finally, we need to pass the value for the id route parameter. For that, we use this tag helper, asp-route dash the name of your route parameter. In our case, the route parameter name is id, so I specify id. If your route parameter name is abc, you can specify that name like that. In our case, it's id. And then we need to specify the value. The value is going to come from this variable. Next, let's use the standard class attribute to style this anchor element using bootstrap styling classes, btn and btn primary. Finally, let's set the link text to display, save our changes and take a look at the browser. There we go, we have our display button and if we view the page source, notice our display button is right here and the correct href attribute value is generated. In ASP.NET Core, as you can see, there are several techniques to generate these hyperlinks. Each technique has pros and cons. I'm going to use this tag helper technique because they are new in ASP.NET Core and they blend in really well with HTML. So I'm going to delete the rest of these hyperlink elements. Let me also change the link text here to view instead of display. Next, in our details view, when we click the back button, we want the index action of the home controller to be executed. So let's again use tag helpers for that asp-controller. Now another important point to keep in mind is both these views, details and index belong to the home controller. Now we want to navigate from the details view to the index view when we click this back button. Since both of them belong to the home controller, we don't have to explicitly specify the controller name. By default, it's going to use the home controller if we do not specify the name of the controller using this asp-controller tag helper because this details view belong to the home controller. But I like being explicit with my code, so I am going to leave this asp-controller tag helper here. But keep in mind, if you want to just go from details view to the index view, when you click this back button, since both of them belong to the home controller, you may or may not include this asp-controller tag helper. And then asp-action to specify the name of the action method. Index action does not need any route data. So this is all the code we need. So let's save our changes and take one final look at the browser. First, let's close all the other tabs on the right and then reload our page. Notice now, when we click the view button, we go to the details view and when we click back, we come back to our index view. At this point, you might be thinking manually generating links by appending these different URL paths is much easier than using tag helpers. As you can see, with tag helpers, we have to type slightly little more code and to be able to use these tag helpers, we also have to learn them. So the obvious question that comes to our mind is, why do we have to use tag helpers when I can manually generate these links by appending these different URL paths? Well, we'll answer that question in our next video. Thank you for listening.